everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. Are you ready to start Kimberbell's Red, White, and Bloom? I am so excited to get going on this with you guys. Today we're going to make the watermelon blocks. This video is just a little bit longer than the other ones will be because I'm going to take you step by baby step how to transfer the designs to your machine. I will link to a video up here of how to get the designs off of the CD onto your machine. And then also we are going to go through a process called color sorting. And that is because when you have multiple designs that are identical, like in this quilt, this particular block has three watermelon blocks. You can do them one at a time. If you're comfortable with that, that's perfectly fine. But there is a very neat way to color sort using Embrilliance Essentials, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. If you don't have Embrilliance Essentials, that's okay. You can use a larger hoop if your machine can take one, and you can stitch out more than one at a time. I have put time stamps in the description box below if you would like to jump ahead to certain areas. I will go through and do a single stitch out of one of the watermelon blocks and then I will do another hooping of multiples using the multi-needle. So we're going to put Spanky to work in this video as well. There are times when I kind of go through things very slowly and then at times it will repeat. That is to get you more and more familiar with the process. It will not be like that in future videos. I am so excited to get started. Let's go over to the computer and start moving files. Ideally, you want to transfer your files from the CD onto your laptop. And what I did was in my documents folder, I created another folder called embroidery. And inside of embroidery, there is a folder called Kimberbell. Double click that. And inside of Kimberbell, here is the red, white, and bloom. And in here, here are the double hooping instructions, your embroidery files, there's your cutting files, and this is the background quilting. Now what I like to do is click on the background quilting one time, just highlight it, and then right click, and here in this menu, click on open in a new window. And there is all of our files. And now I'm going to come back to this one. I'm going to go to my embroidery files, double click. I'm going to go to PES. That's what I need for my embroidery machine. And then in the PES files, there is the tote, the table topper, and here's the quilt. On this one, I'm going to click it once, right click, and open in a new window. So here are all the files that I need, and I can take this window here. I'm just going to X out of it. I don't need it anymore. So now I have access to all of the background quilting files, and here are my design files. And this is just, just going to make it easy to access all of my designs that I need to make this quilt. Now the reason you can see these design files is because I have a brilliant thumbnailer installed on my system. That is a utility that allows you to see your designs. And so it's very, very easy to know what you're looking at. If you don't have this or you don't have a piece of software that does this, I highly recommend you get it. You will absolutely love it. It is not expensive at all and it just works so very well. All right, so if you do not have Embrilliance, I'm going to be using Embrilliance Essentials on my computer. Embrilliance is a third-party software. It works with all home embroidery machines, and you edit designs on your computer and then save them to either a USB to take to your machine, or you can send designs wirelessly to the Brother Luminaire or the Baby Lock Solaris. I'm just going to do it in order and always do the background quilting designs first. I'll click on this window to bring it up front and we need the lines one horizontal four by four for the watermelon blocks. Double click. Here are the embroidery files. You'll need to read the instructions and I'm going to go to the PES folder. 
and I need lines one, four by four, which is this one right here. So over here now in this quick view, quick access menu, I have my USB drive installed in my computer already. I'm going to just grab a hold of this and drag it over to the USB till it's highlighted and let go. And then I'm going to take and click on this window and grab my watermelon. Let me scroll down to the USB on this one. And I'm going to take it and just drag it over and pull it in. And now when I click on the USB drive, here are the designs. Here's the watermelon and here are my lines right there. So the USB drive is now ready to go to the machine. You will pull in the horizontal lines first and then you'll pull in the watermelon block and if possible center them using the machine software or center them by using a target sticker or a crosshair of some sort on your stabilizer. So let me show you how to do this now using Embrilliance. I'm going to open Embrilliance. I have a 5x7 hoop ready to go. You can change your hoop size by clicking this icon right up here, this little yellow icon. It's for preferences. And I'm going to choose the 130 by 180, which is the 5x7. You change your format, choose your format. There are hoops. The standard hoops for your machine are all listed in this menu right here. So I'm choosing PES because I'm using a brother. And then I'm going to scroll down and uh, you can just find the one you need. I need the 130 by 180 millimeter. That's the 5 seven, five by 7 Click Apply, click OK. Now I'm going to go back to my yellow folder and I'm going to come over here and get my 4x4 four four lines horizontal. Just wherever it is, just grab it and click highlight it and drag it onto the Embrilliance desktop. And you can see that it has centered itself. It automatically centers itself in the block. And there are my design files. And I'm going to grab the, minimize this. I'm going to grab the watermelon. See all these different windows? That's why they call it Windows Software. Isn't that cool? All right. And they have both been pulled in and centered themselves perfectly in the block. You need to make sure that your machine is on for the Solaris, the Baby Lock Solaris, or the Brother Luminaire. You will come up to the Utility menu and click on Send to Solaris XP1. This also works with the XP2 and the XP1 that has been upgraded to the XP2. And I'm going to type and give it a name. It does not like the space bar and it will bark at you when you click the space bar. So I'm going to put BKG Watermelon. And BKG is background. I'm going to tell it OK. And file sent to the machine. I'm using my Kimberbell Light Mesh Cutaway Stabilizer. So the easiest way to do this is to just roll a piece of it out. This is real high quality stuff, you guys. This is better than the stuff I get off of Amazon. My goodness, that feels nice. Very nice. I take my embroidery hoop and I just put the arm of it to the outside edge and then just cut it just a little bit larger than the hoop. And I'm going to hoop it. Essentially, we're going to float. Every block is going to be floated. So let's pull it taut. I'm going to tighten it up. And one of the things I'm going to do on all of these, I'm going to center the points on the hoop the north, south, east, and west. And I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to create crosshairs in the hoop on the stabilizer. This is a friction marker. It will come out with heat. So I'm just going to make these points on my stabilizer. So now I know where the center of the hoop is.
Now with my fabric, I am not going to be doing the chalk line crosshair. The odds of you forgetting that it's there and putting some sort of vinyl on top of it and have a crosshair forever inside is, well for me is high anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an old garment sewing trick. I'm folding my block in half lengthwise and on each folded point I'm going to cut a tiny little bit out just a tiny bit to make a little V and I'm going to do that on all four sides of the fabric and this way you can keep your fabric nice and straight and you don't have to worry about having any errant chalk lines getting stuck inside your project. To me, erasing all that is such a pain. So now, this is perfect. Now I can set my little V points right on the sides and angle it just right. And I know that they meet. Everything is gonna be just fine here. Now that I have my crosshairs on my stabilizer, I know that I'll be able to hoop this straight with the little marks and this is all going to be cut off so these are not going to be they're not going to affect the block at all so the first stitch for the background quilting is the batting placement line and we'll trim around the batting and then the next stitch will be for the placement line for the fabric Okay, in the machine here, I am going to thread it. Let me back out just a little bit. I'm going to thread it from the very beginning. Let me put my little tower up tall enough here. And I'm using Isocord navy blue thread so that the background quilting kind of disappears. This is not required. I like to put my thread through the little thread guide that is really supposed to be for a bobbin. And most machines will have a numbering system and you just need to follow that thread path all the way around. I like to floss on thread guide number two to make sure I get my thread in between the tension discs. And I'm just following it around up and over. And I have the thread cutter there. In here, I have a bobbin. This is a 90 weight pre-wound bobbin. I buy them by a box of 144 on Amazon and I've been using them for years and years and they work fine. The needle in my machine is an Organ 7511 EBBR, which is for embroidery. And I'm gonna press the button to thread the needle. I had to wake it up. Okay, so it's all threaded and ready to go. I'm going to put my hoop on and slide that in and press this button down. And now we need to pull up the design in the machine. So on the computer screen here, this is the Brother Luminaire. So this is a combo sewing and embroidery machine. Because we're going to, if I was to hit the sewing button right here on the screen, this embroidery arm that's on it would move way over to my far left side and be completely out of the way. So I have my handy dandy little power tools with thread USB stick here. I'm going to put it in the machine and I'm going to touch embroidery. Now, if you do not have any software, like I used in Brilliance, if you don't have any software, I'm going to touch the pocket for memory. And this is the universal symbol for USB. I'm going to touch it. And here are my background quilting lines. I'm going to touch that. And I'm going to click set. And you can see they're coming up here. And once you have it set, go to add. And go back to the pocket for memory. Back to the USB and grab your watermelon and click set and it's completely ready to go you can see here on the screen it gives you your frame sizes your hoop sizes that you can use if you want to see it bigger you can touch and make it bigger 
you are all ready to go. Uh, there is an edit menu. I don't recommend doing anything with it at all because the machine will, and most every machine will do this, they will bring in the design automatically centered. Then you just press embroidery and the button turns green on the luminaire right here and you're ready to go. Now I'm going to show you how you will retrieve the design if you sent it wirelessly. I'm going to touch return and delete and tell it OK. And I'm going to touch the home button and tell it OK. Embroidery, the pocket for memory. Here's your wireless button. Looks like little radar waves. Brother's kind of famous for that. And I sent it over wirelessly and background watermelon right there. Set. And it's ready to go. That's simple. So you can see you don't have to have in brilliance in order to pull in both designs. You just want to do them. And if, if you do not have the ability to add a design like this, it has add button. Once you click set, it has add. If you don't have an add button, stitch out the background quilting. Don't remove it from the hoop. Just go ahead and leave the hoop in place and bring in the watermelon and stitch it out and it will work just fine. I'm going to touch embroidery and we are ready to go. So the first line of stitching you can see right here there is a little preview menu on the Luminaire. This is the placement line for the batting. Now you need to remove the hoop from the machine and you want some good curved embroidery scissors. Don't go cheap on these. You definitely want to get some that aren't going to hurt your fingers. These are Ginger scissors and I will link to them below. Trim the batting away from around the stitch line. Put the hoop back in the machine. The next stitch is going to be the placement stitch for the fabric. And I'm going to align my little V's that I cut with the top and bottom and side to side. That'll work out just fine. Now you should change your thread if you're not using the color that you're going to do on your background quilting. You should change your thread to a color that uh, will kind of disappear into the background quilting. And get ready to go. That's why I leave my thread the same color uh, as the background quilting. I don't fiddle with it in the machine at all because the machine needs to see color changes to tell it to stop. That's how the digitizer told it to stop. Okay, now we're going to stitch the outline of the watermelon and I'm going to change my thread color. I keep all of the threads I'm going to use in a particular project on a thread stand behind the machine. I'll link to it below. It makes your life so much easier to have your threads all ready to go. And I'm going to change my thread color. I do a single tie off knot and then just pull it through the machine and thread the needle. 
Here's the placement stitch for the watermelon. And here's the tack down for the watermelon. Now I used a green thread so that you can see this, but you would probably want to use a red thread because red is the next stitch that's gonna happen right here. And you wanna take your scissors and trim away the extra applique fabric around the outside of the stitching. Get as close as possible. You guys, this is why I have a cutting machine. You don't want your scissors to be at an angle. You want to keep them as flat as possible against the base of the hoop so that you don't cut into your threads. All right, that looks good. And now we're going to stitch down the top of the watermelon and the little hearts. It's time for the outer rind. I'm going to use this pretty bright green. Change my thread. There is a tail on the fabric right back here. I'm going to, it should have been pulled down in. Sometimes that it doesn't and that's okay. Just stop the machine and keep going. And I'm going to change out my threads to black for the seeds. All right, it's all finished. Remove the hoop. There is a little jump thread right here, and I'm going to take my scissors and a pair of tweezers and remove that. Okay, they want us to trim this block to four and a half by four and a half. So I'm gonna remove it from the hoop. And I'm gonna use the Kimber Bell Orange Pop Square Rulers. And I'm also gonna use my rotating mat. That makes life a lot easier. The smallest one is four and a half by four and a half. And I'm just going to center the arrows on the sides of the ruler with the little notches in my fabric so I know that they are right. And then I'm going to put another one on top. It gives me a little more place, a little more room to put my hand. Look at that. <laughs> Didn't that come out precious? Oh, that's adorable. I love it. Now I'm going to make another file because I'm going to do this in multiples for the multi-needle. So I'm going to come up here to the top and click on new and I need to change my hoop size. I'm going to go to my preferences button and here is the 300 by 200 multi-needle. Click OK and I'm going to roll my mouse button back one click and give me a little bit better size there. You can scroll up and down using this little scroll bar right here. You can make the hoop easier to see. You're not changing the size of the hoop. Grab this little bar and just kind of move it up and down a little bit until you've got it where you like it. So I need to bring in the background quilting. I'm going to go back to my one right here, this window, and I'm going to grab it and drag it in, and it has centered itself, and I'm going to grab it and drag it in again, and that's two, and you can see over here in the objects window that you have two of these. Let me minimize this. They look like one, but they're sitting right on top of each other. If you cannot see objects and properties, you need to come up to the top 
and click on View, Toolbars and Windows, and make sure that Objects and Properties has a blue check mark next to it. So I'm going to click this first one over here in the Objects panel, and I'm going to use the arrow key on my keyboard and move it over out of the way. And then I'm going to click this one in the Objects panel and use my other arrow key and move it to my right. There, now they are not on top of each other any longer. I'm going to come back down to my yellow folder and I'm going to go back to my design files and I'm going to pull this, click on it one time and drag it onto the window for Brilliance and I'm going to do it again and drag it in. And once again, there are two of them, but they're sitting on top of each other. So I'm going to click the first one and move it over to that piece of background quilting. And then I'm going to click the second one and move it over. There. Now what I want to do is make sure that I have my design file centered properly on the background quilting. So I'm going to click the first piece of background quilting hold down the control key on your keyboard and click the first piece of the design file of the watermelon. And up here in the top, I'm going to come up to this particular icon. It's for align and distribute. Click it one time. And here is where you align things on top of each other. And on this side is where you align things beside each other. So I want to click the center on top of each other and center beside each other and click apply. And there we go. That one's right now. Click close. And now I'm going to click my second set of background quilting. Hold down the control key and click the second watermelon. And I'm going to come over here to align and distribute and center vertically, center horizontally, and apply, and close. And this is ready to go. So now I do not have the ability to send this wirelessly to my multi-needle, so I'm going to click File, Save Stitch File As. And you will come over here and go to your, uh, your drop-down arrow and navigate to your USB drive. And I am going to make sure that it says PES down here. If you have another machine brand, you will click this arrow and change it to your file type that you need for your machine, all right? Here's your Janome, here's your Husqvarna, here's your Singers. Okay, we have lots, every kind of home embroidery machine. I'm gonna use yours and I'm gonna call it Watermelon multi. Okay, and it's ready to go on my USB. I'm going to click save and we're ready to go to the machine. Now I want to do a color sort. Otherwise what will happen is it will stitch down that outer line and this outer line, see how these are both default one blue, default one blue, then it will stitch this one right away and it won't know to stop. And I want it to stop before it stitches this particular color. So these colors cannot be the same and these two colors cannot be the same. It doesn't matter what color you make them, you just have to make it a different color. So on the second one, I'm going to hit default blue and I'm going to click this and I'm just going to choose a different, the one right next to it and tell it okay. It doesn't matter which color you make it. And then on the orange, I need it to be a different color and I'm just going to choose the top one and tell it okay. So now it's going to stop in there and I want to do the same thing here. I'm going to touch the first blue, click the button, 
make it the periwinkle, the same as the last one, and then this orange, I'm gonna click it and make it the same color as the one above it. That's all I need to do in order to get the machine to stop when I need it to so that I can place the batting and the fabric when it's time. And now all you need to do is go up to the utility menu and you're gonna click color sort. And so it has sorted the colors and instead of clicking save it, you want to click view new. And it'll create a whole new tab and now you can see it's one single design. But when you open it up, it's going to click, see, it's going to do just the placement line for the batting, and then it's going to do the tack down for the batting. And then it's going to do the placement line for the fabric and the tack down for the fabric. And then it's going to do, oh, that's not going to work. Okay, that's not going to work because these are not the same color of thread. This is why you click the new button. So I'm going to get rid of this. Nope, I don't want to save it. And I'll just click on the design so it pulls it back in. And I need to do the same thing. So this says default turquoise, that's fine. I'm going to go to the second one and I'm going to call it a different color so that I can tell it a different color on the machine and we will use medium turquoise. I'll just grab the top one. The color itself on the screen doesn't matter because I'm going to tell it exactly what colors to use based on the threads I have loaded in the machine. I'm gonna tell it okay. Now let's take a look at this and go utility, color sort, new view. There we go. Now let's see what we got. Placement line, tack down line, Placement line, tack down line, dark blue threads, light blue threads, and then we are on to, that is, both of these are going to stitch at the same time. That's going to be my watermelon color. And then, what is this one? I need to change this one up. Right, and my watermelons. I have applique pieces I need to put down. This is the placement line. Peacock, okay. I'm, I'm gonna want it to stop default orange. I'm gonna change that. We'll choose orange red and tell it okay. Orange red, tell it okay. And then it's gonna stitch this and that's fine. So it's gonna stop between orange red and the desire. That's exactly what I want. Everything else is fine for it to stitch on its own without any intervention from me. You see, you just kind of have to go through this and think about it. Okay, so now let's do utility, color sort, new view. Now let's see what we got. Placement line, tack down, stop, trim, placement line, tack down, one color, next color, good. Placement line, tack down. There we go, there we go, there we go, and there we go. All right, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So now I'm going to go file, save stitch file as, and I'm going to call it sorted melons and click save. You wanna make sure it's in your files, your machine's format, click save. And now we're ready to go to the machine. Okay, so I'm going to put my USB in my little adapter here. And I'm going to hit the USB symbol. And there are my sorted melons right there. It's going to say it's too large. And I'm going to tell it OK. And well, it says if you want to use this, you're going to need to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to do that. It automatically brought them in upside down. That's not a big deal. I'm going to click set. And then just to make my brain happy, I'm going to hit rotate. And that will rotate them 90 degrees. It actually rotates them 180, but it knows. So we'll just leave it like that. That's perfect. I'm going to tell it OK. And edit end. 
because I'm all finished. I don't need to change the size or rotate anything at all. I'm going to hit edit end. And now you want to touch these three little spools and tell it what threads to use. We have 12 stops. And so it goes to 9, 10, and it starts over again with 1 and 2. This line of numbers right here actually represents the spool number that we will use on the back of the machine. And we need to change that so that they agree with what we want. What we're really interested in is these. this little picture right here tells you what stitch that is for. This is stitch number 1 out of 12. And I'm going to use spool number three for that so I'm just going to touch the three that's the placement line and before it stitches the next one I'm going to tell it to stop so you want to put the little hand up because I need to put my batting down and then I want the batting tack down line to be spool number three as well and before it stitches the next one I need it to stop so I can trim away the batting. It's going to stitch color number three as well, which is fine. It's actually spool number three. That is a background quilting. I need that to be spool number three. There's the other background quilting. I need that to be spool number four. It's my navy dark blue. There are the placement lines for the watermelon slices. That needs to be spool number two. And before it goes to the next one, I need it to stop. So I can put my applique on, and then when it does stitch, I need that to be spool number two. And there is uh, the watermelon bites, and that's going to be number two. There's the outer rind color. That is color spool number eight. There's the inner rind. That is spool number one. And the seeds is spool number five. That is the fabric placement line. I do need that to stitch. What was I thinking? I don't know. And that needs to be spool number three is fine. Okay. Embroidery. We're ready to go. Here's our placement line for the batting. remove the hoop from the frame and want to trim around the batting. This is why I write front on here. I always do. I just got into the habit of doing that. In this case, I'm, I'm not entirely sure it matters, but if it does matter, I will put the hoop back in the right direction. Now I need placement line for the fabric. It doesn't matter. We're going to trim these to almost like exactly where this placement line is for this fabric. So it does not matter. Just kind of eyeball that you get them as close to center as possible. It'll still stitch out just fine and trim just fine because there's a lot of fabric that you trim off around the, edge of the edges of these.
place my watermelon pieces. I'm going to remove the hoop. This is a real cute little mini ironing pad. It's designed to be rolled up and you tie it. I got it from Embroidery Garden and inside it has insole bright. I'm just going to put it underneath and make sure my watermelon is placed exactly where I want it. And I'm going to take my little iron. This is my Cricut Mini Press. Love this thing. It is perfect for this kind of hoop work. Now I could skip the next stitch because I've already ironed down the applique, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to let it do its thing because then it's just going to keep on. Hi, Harley. Just, my husband just walked in with the dog. Mail call. Done. Oh, I love this multi needle. Look at that. They look great. Let's go trim them up. Oh, they turned out great. I need to trim a little thread right there. But okay, their watermelons are finished. All right, you guys, this was a lot of fun. They turned out absolutely adorable, and I am so excited to do the rest of the blocks. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.